I tell you something. You 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 might get famous. You might get rich one day. Maybe you lose money and and then you lose you know some opportunities. You move locations, but the most important is to keep in touch with people. Mm. You know the connections, the friendship. This is the most valuable thing you can uh, you know get and cherish for life. I am so grateful that I'm. St- Martin Hudak, which was 10 years ago, six years ago, and now I'm still the same guy. And it uh, doesn't matter how successful our business is or how famous we are or how you know rich we might get one day if we will. Uh, I'm very happy I could still be on the ground with my feet and keep the connections with people anywhere around the world. And I'm just grateful for, for people out there. So this is hospitality at its best. So hospitality is about socializing, connecting with people, being humble enough, staying with your feet on the ground, but with your soul up. <laughs> so hospitality, yeah. hospitality at its at, at its best. Nice. Cheers! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hospitality Secrets Podcast. Paul Svrlia here, and I'm super excited today to present you one another surprise guest, a surprise guest from a different part of the world. We we barely synchronized ourselves, seven hour distance with uh, fully hectic schedules. I have a surprise guest from the different part of the world my uh, today's guest is uh, Martin Hudak who uh, I heard about him when he won the world Co- uh, world uh, coffee and good spirits championship in 2017 I briefly followed him before a bit he's truly uh, iconic in this world he's having lots and lots and lots of projects in the hospitality industry among others he was the international bartender of uh, of the year in 2019 he's the co-owner of uh, maybe semi a, a super successful bar even from the beginning they won the the best international cocktail bar in in 2019 uh, it was the the world's best bar in 2020 uh, and uh, since then i didn't even mention the the semi junior that he opened so he truly does a lot of a lot of things and he's opening places and he's launching spirits and he's everywhere <laughs> even though it was a pandemic and and uh, things uh, uh, slowed a bit from what i saw honestly he kind of accelerated <laughs> to, with uh, with this pandemic so i'm super excited that uh, martin accepted and uh, uh, gave us one hour to ask him questions about hospitality about his perception of hospitality so it's a big honor to have you here martin hudak welcome to hospitality secrets Hi, hi, Paul. Ciao. Good morning, afternoon or evening to everyone who's watching at the moment in different parts of the world. I'm very honored to be here online with you and uh, thank you for uh, offering me this opportunity to share uh, my vision, my view, my passion for for industry and thank you for your uh, beautiful, generous introduction. You really make me blush. <laughs> yeah, it was a brief introduction. I, I was thinking to stay like 10 minutes talking about your achievements or do it like sharp and then have just uh, talking <laughs> about hospitality. So I could go on and on with... Uh, you are well done. You are doing lots of things. Where where are you now? I'm seeing you. you in this moment you are doing something. <laughs> yeah, at this moment I just uh, close uh, I just closed my, my bar, our newest bar, newest operation called Semi Junior, which is a... Uh, like a smaller version or a daily version of the maybe semi. So think about cocktail bar and a coffee shop in once operated uh, from early morning, seven o'clock till six, seven at night, sort of like aperitivo. So I'm here at the moment, just closed. Uh, it's this beautiful, a green pistachio marble venue. With wow. Lots of mirrors, very much European style. Uh, we're one of the bitters Amaro, b- biggest Amaro bitter shelf in Australia with vermouth, love, ABV spirit, and of course, my own roasted coffee. So this is the project I'm currently in at the moment. And it's a project I'm kind of dedicating more than 80% of my life. So you are going full on. From what I saw, you are the coffee and cocktails guy, no? You are... <laughs> me. So you are the preacher of... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> preaching the coffee culture together with cocktails because they are a match. <laughs> 
Yes, exactly, exactly. That's that's my role. I want to bridge the gap between the world of coffee and cocktails, and I want bartenders to appreciate more coffee, and vice versa, baristas appreciate more cocktails, and uh, in the end of the day, give different sort of experience to my guests. So yeah, that's where I am, and that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so 80% of the time you are uh, at your bar. How about uh, Mr. Black? How is uh, what is Mr. Black about a bit? So Mr. Black is an Australian craft coffee liqueur, uh, being on the market for the last eight years. It's number one best-selling coffee liqueur in the world. Whoa, we are whoa, top whoa. four most Woo-hoo. famous liqueurs, according to Drinks International. So yeah, proud sponsor of Tells the Cocktails, 50 Best. And uh, yeah, been used amongst one of the best bartenders and bars around the world. Uh, locally made, roasted here in Australia, made here with, with the highest appreciation for good quality coffee. And yeah, over three years ago, they chose me as the face of the brand. Uh, they didn't choose George Clooney. They chose me. <laughs> uh, it was a tough decision, and, uh, I heard. They were thinking, mm, should we go for George yeah. Clooney or uh, Martin? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for last for last three years, I've been traveling around the world and educating bartenders, baristas, doing lots of seminars, guest shifts and pop-ups. And uh, even though it's pandemic year, we're still uh, working hard and we double up our production uh, as much as I can. I'm trying to be in distillery and help out. And uh, next week I'm flying to uh, Gold Coast to uh, to Byron Bay and uh, Brisbane to some activations locally in Australia. And once borders open again, I'm gonna be on the border around the world. And you might see me with my jacket, wearing my iconic hat, making coffee cocktails. So that's what I do. Uh, other, so this other, is like other, 20% yeah. of your time, no? This is like 20% of your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the moment. And then another 50% is maybe semi, and another 50% in a Nancy, and then my coffee company. So at the moment, I'm going like 350%. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well done. So well, from what I'm seeing, the, the pandemic and this situation didn't stop you, but, but uh, it even motivates you to, to hustle more, to, to do more things, to, yeah. to get better. Yeah. So uh, do you have any other uh, percents that you are having that you are, uh, <laughs> what, what are you working? What pr- other projects do you have during this period? I am, uh, it's, it's kind of secret, but not really. I'm about to finish and publish my book. Wow, uh, nice. Yeah, so it's going to happen this year. I'm a self-publishing, self-financing uh, book about the nice. history, present, and the future of coffee and cocktails. It's about 300-page Bible uh, where, um, where I went very deep into the sources trying to find out what was the first coffee cocktail historically and if there is any and uh, try to introduce this to the bartenders and our professional audience because there's no such as book out there. There is no such book, and you, you, you are the preacher, like <laughs> going through the history, the religion of coffee and cocktails. <laughs> yes, yes exactly, exactly. Maybe you should do your own religion. <laughs> <laughs> coffee religion. <yeah. laughs> so, where can the listeners connect with you if they want to fa- follow your amazing projects or follow you while traveling? Where they can see you on social media? I really prefer at the moment uh, Instagram over Facebook, to be honest. Uh, I'm very, very active. Uh, more than 30, 40% of my daytime I spend on social media because I'm running all our accounts within the company. Wow. So with my marketing background as well uh, and photography, uh, I'm doing lots of socials for our group. So that's where I'm spending lots of time connect connect with our audience and our regulars and future potential guests. So uh, Instagram is the powerful tool and you can find me there. Martin underscore Hudak, H-U-D-A-K. Follow for follow, like for like. If you have some coffee cocktail recipes, make sure you share it with me, tag me there. And uh, yeah, let's become friends. Yeah, uh, you should follow uh, his profile. And uh, in case you are watching this podcast or you are listening, just click click in the description and you'll find the link that will take you straight to his uh, Instagram account. So connect. It's about connecting and creating a global com- hospitality community. Exactly. Where, where, uh, in which other Instagram accounts are you are you uh, activating? You said also Sammy Junior, so follow Sammy Junior on Instagram. Exactly. So it's uh, Sammy underscore Junior underscore Sydney, or maybe underscore Sammy underscore Sydney, and uh, that's where I'm active most of the time. Plus, I have my own coffee roasting company. Uh, where I roast my own coffee, and it's a separate brand called Spiritual Coffee Co. Co. Spiritual as a company. Coffee, so sp- nice. Spiritual. Ah. 
Yeah. So you are so, making yeah, your religion. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slowly, slowly. <laughs> nice. So spiritual coffee on Instagram? Co. Spiritual coffee co. Good. See you. See you. So all, all, these, all these links you will find in the description. Just click the description uh, button and you will find the links. Just let's connect, let's learn from each other and let's uh, make the hospitality industry a better place. Love it, Paul. You are well prepared. I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I, I kind of started loving during pandemic also. I, I pivoted somehow and I, I said I, I want to connect a bit with people around the world because we have the knowledge. We, we, we have everything we have. We just need to support each other and thrive through this uh, through these times yeah yeah agree agree so you are doing plenty of things and lots of <laughs> lots of uh, per percentages do you have <laughs> over 100 uh, but where did everything started uh, what's your your backstory I, in the hospitality industry i mean i'm coming from very small town and humble family backgrounds uh I'm coming from slovakia so central east europe um not very much country famous for uh, bartenders apart from Eric Lawrence and Marianne Becker and etc. Et et <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's few of us. Um, but I always, uh, always, I was, I was always um, interested in uh, in arts and and the music and and a performance and as such. And I tried to become very famous a uh, actor or singer when I was younger, and I did mm -hmm. for a little bit. Uh, but then I quit that job because my family always told me it's better to have a piece of paper in the hand and sort of like certification. So I graduated as a chef with diploma, but I really, really hate it in the kitchen because I always want to be out there with the people. Um, so I started working in a local coffee shop for five years and uh, making coffee in the morning, cocktails at the night, kind of both. And that's where I realized that I really, really like to be in the bold worlds. And that was more than 12 years ago. And uh yeah, after I achieved almost everything in Slovakia, which was pretty much easy because it's a small country and there are not many of us. So I got many awards and I started traveling and doing lots of international competitions. And it kind of opened my eyes and I realized that the world is way bigger than Slovakia and uh, there are more challenges out there than, than, than at home. And I realized I have to move on and step up my game and kind of challenge myself to see if I'm really that good. And that's what happened in 2014. I uh, luckily... Luckily, by big luck, I got the opportunity to become a senior bartender at the American Bar at the Savoy in London and uh, stand next to the legends and carrying the legacy of the oldest American bar in the world. So that was the life-changing experience when I put the white jacket on and shaved and uh, served the queen and celebrities. And, and uh, yeah, when I realized I'm really shit and I'm not as good as I think. <laughs> it was a truly game changer being there, like in, in the highest... Uh point of of this industry nice yeah and after that yeah, it, it was, was smart, i think it was uh tough to be there it wasn't easy just to take the white jacket and do whatever you want <laughs> i was uh i was crying first month it was first time with our family different city i was lost and uh you know uh, all those famous places that are a bit of like a golden bubble you know you 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 perceive them as something magical and it should be like that but behind the scenes is really uh, heart and it's lots of pain and tears and uh, uh, it's like this beautiful swan on the lake you know we were like white swans you know on top but under we were paddling 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 and uh, uh, after almost uh, four years uh, I was on the edge of collapse and I wasn't happy anymore and uh, yeah I was not in a good stage and I was thinking really about the change but it's not necessarily just the Savoy itself it's a London as a city and the weather and the people and the pressure on your shoulders, you know, in 2017, we became best bar in the world in 50 best. We became best international hotel bar of the year, and best bar team, etc. That year, I won a Coffee in Good Spirit. Uh, I did top 10 world class UK, things like that. You know, it's really, really many things happened in 2017. I said, it cannot be better than that. I achieved everything. I, I think it's the time to go and move on and challenge myself again like I did four years ago. And... The only one way how I could see the challenge myself would be to go on the other side of the world where I don't know anyone, no one knows me, and start from beginning, start from zero, and open my own bar. 
and making I it, it from scratch. You had some balls to go like, where, where should I go? Mm, <laughs> let's turn the globe a bit. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. So true you, that. Had, you, you took it from scratch. Well done. Nice. So since four years, yeah. you, you moved to Australia, you opened your own bar. And, and since then, the bar was successful. You achieved uh, many things with it. And Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a me necessarily. It's a, it's a teamwork and effort of all the people. I have incredible incredible business partners and I would call them best friends as well. Andrea Gualdi, uh, Australian Barton of the Year and World Class winner as well, uh, 2017-18 in Mexico. Uh, Ex-Artesian in Langham, right? He was there for four years. So the same caliber of knowledge as, as, as me, I would say. Uh, Stefano Catino, one of the most hospitable and cheerful uh, uh, personality in our industry. And, you know, we joined the forces and it's really this, this hard work and teamwork. And we were lucky enough to have amazing uh, uh, colleagues, employees and partners to be skyrocket our business. And within a year, we got 14 international and national awards from 50 Best to Self the Cocktails, Australian Bar Awards, etc. So wow. it, it, it was just incredible. Incredible. mind blowing you 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 smashed it <laughs> well done for the for the whole team you did a great job in in different part of the world we followed you we saw you this is why social media it's somehow connecting us yeah. bringing us closer so since then you opened the uh, semi junior uh, so one more uh, yeah. thing yeah. and uh, one more journey Yeah, it was it was always kind of logical to open one more venue, and with my coffee knowledge, we wanted to focus on a morning trade, uh, and we wanted to call it a junior, like a smaller version, but it's actually quite big. <laughs> <laughs> so so we have to work hard. Yeah, <laughs> we have to work harder. But the uh, location is more strategic; is in the heart of the CBD financial district. We are next to the Apple Store and Louis Vuitton, so it's very much business area. Um, lots of lots of food traffic, lots of offices around bankers and lawyers, um, and there is nothing like that in Australia. Like I tell you honestly, I came from Europe, and I've been learned that you can have a coffee at the night and you can have a cocktail in the morning. It's pretty normal uh, wherever you are. You know, Romania, Slovakia, Czech Republic doesn't matter. You know, it's normal to have a both at any time of the day. But here in Australia, there is no coffee shop serving alcohol, and there is no bar serving, serving a coffee. decent cup of yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah right. So I found this hole in between. And uh, yes, Australia is known for great quality coffee, amazing baristas, roasteries, but all of them, they're closing at three o'clock in the city. And I was like, like, I have to change that. We have to do something different. And uh, that's why we bridging the, that, that, that evening with the morning, with that aperitivo hour, you know, for us, three, four, five, six o'clock is like the busiest time of the day. People come in and having a TV, they're having a cup of coffee, you know, they have a little snack, salumi, cheese plate. It's like something like, think about Dante in New York or Termini in London, you know, like that sort of vibe. And it really doesn't exist in Australia, the culture, and we really want to change it. We want to bring Aperitivo back in the game, this kind of Italian, European passion. And it's normal to have a spritz in the lunchtime. It's normal to have a good espresso at six o'clock in the evening, you know, to keep you going. And that's the main idea of Semi Junior. We, this is our second month, which has opened. And uh, I have to say, this is going to be a very successful project. I have amazing, amazing feelings and uh, it's going to be very good. So for the Lord, all, all listeners, if you are not traveling to Australia, at least keep an eye on social media to see what amazing stuff are, uh, are developing there. Like... Um, mind blowing serves and mixing coffee with uh, with cocktails like brilliantly well done congratulations uh, thank you thank for you. what in this journey uh, do you feel most grateful about famous you might get rich one day maybe you lose money and and then you lose you know some opportunities you move through locations but the most important is to keep in touch with people mm. you know the connections the friendship This is the most valuable thing you can, uh, you know, get and cherish for life. I am so grateful that I'm still Martin Hudak, which was 10 years ago, six years ago, and now I'm still the same guy. And uh, it doesn't matter how successful our business is or how famous we are or how, you know, rich we might get one day if we will. Uh, I'm very happy I could still be on the ground with my feet and keep the connections with people anywhere around the world. And I'm just grateful for, for people out there.
So this is hospitality at its best. So hospitality is about socializing, connecting with people, being humble enough, staying with your feet on the ground, but with your soul up. <laughs> so hospitality, yeah. hospitality at its at, at its best. Nice. Wow. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why uh, I wanted to to share ideas, to ask you questions about hospitality because you live hospitality. It's actually it's a way of life. This uh, this life. It's How true. It's true. It's uh, yeah. Say it. Say it go, again. Go 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 go. No no no. Sorry. Go. <laughs> no. I, I I mean, you know, I always wanted to serve others. You know, I always had the feeling like if I want to find a purpose in life, I have to do something for others, and it could be through the different things, but it's somehow through the coffee and cocktails and this whole hospitality business. And there's nothing better than you know creating connections, make people happy. Make them smile and uh, make them remember you and the moments with you. And it's so magical and powerful. And sometimes we take it for granted because we are tired and we have problems in life. And But I think every moment is so unique and special. And uh, even now, like I just closed the bar half an hour ago. And I remember one of the last table, like I was serving them. I was on the floor. We are short staff, of course. No one sits here during the pandemic. No one wants to work. But... I was so busy about trying to pay attention, top up the water, give them snack, tell them more stories about drink. And they're like, wow, like your hospitality is incredible. And I was like, how amazing is that? People are going to remember the way you serve them, you treat them, rather than they're going to remember your espresso martini, you know? And I think that's the magic of it. I, I really want people to be like, yes, we go to this place because there's this guy called Martin and he's just so charming and, you know, he's a funny guy and he treats us very well and, Maybe they don't even care we do best espresso martini. They don't even care I roast coffee or I'm world champion. And they don't have to, you know. What they care, I'm a good guy and genuine and, and I want to give them best time. Amazing, amazing hospitality. <laughs> so these are the hospitality yeah. secrets. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. How would, you, how would you describe your life in, in only one sentence? If you were to distill the whole journey that you had, the whole hospitality in your life, how would you distill it to just one sentence? One or two sentences if... Uh, if like wow. some... <laughs> You know, I always, I always try to tell the younger generation or my colleagues and employees that, you know, every day try to be better than yesterday and worse than tomorrow. And only that way you can progress. Only that way you can always, you know, step up your game and be better and better and better. Because if you realize, oh, I'm the best, you stop and there is no progress. So I know I have to be better. And I know I'm already better than yesterday, but I'm worse than tomorrow. And that's the most uh, important information you should, that you should have. Oh, but worse yeah. than tomorrow. This will be actually the, the title of the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so in just one sentence, this is like psh, a teaser of everything that people will find inside. The one hour of questions of Martin Hudak. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, what was the moment you realized that you love this industry or it was a moment or, or it came gradually? Uh, I think it came gradually, you know, like from the beginning I thought I'm going to be this famous bartender, throwing bottles, beat the fire, get lots of phone numbers, go on a date every day. But the reality was completely different, you know. The first guest goes sick, threw up in a bathroom, my boss sent me to clean it. Second guest stole the bar stool, you know. Third guest had a fight and I'm like, you have to stop dealing with the real situations. And I'm like, it's not as beautiful as I thought, you know. It's not as lucrative and sexy as I thought. It's a real cold shower. I got slapped in the face. And, uh, you know, you really have to get into this and take your time to love this. Uh, I would say uh, Savoy and London and American Bar really opened my eyes. And uh, I saw lots of regulars coming back. And we, we gained many new regulars. And when you see that people choosing you over competitors, or over other friends and their bars, uh, it, it really, it's really kind of uh, amazing feeling. And uh, you realize you have a power. And the power is, yes, knowledge. You have to have a knowledge of your products and classic drinks. And, but as well, the power of your personality, of your charisma, of, of the, the way you talk, the way you treat the others. And I think I kind of realized back in London that maybe I'm not the strongest in terms of creating drinks and putting flavors together. 
maybe I'm not the strongest in terms of telling you the original recipe of Sazerac or Martinez or whatever, but I'm the strongest the way I can make you entertain and engage with you and uh, make you laugh and make you feel comfortable in my presence. And that's what I found. That was the moment that I found that, yes, hospitality is a place to be. It is exactly where I fit in. It's exactly where I think I can do positive change and impact in the world. And then, of course, this coffee and cocktail came. And I remember my ex-manager, Declan McGurk from the Savoy, he told me together with Eric Lawrence that when I started that, they said, yes, you are one of the senior bartenders. You are one of only top four senior bartenders at this moment. But how are you going to differentiate yourself? How are you going to be different than the others? What are you going to bring in the game? And I was like, I don't know. I just want to be myself. They said, good, but think about coffee cocktails. You know, that's something no one does. And back in 2014, 15, no one gives a shit. No one cared in London. You know, everyone was eating shit coffee. No one talked about espresso martini. No one talked about Mr. Black, you know. And I was like, you know what, you're right. I'm going to be different. I'm going to do that, you know. And I think every bartender out there who choosing hospitality career try to think how to be different. You know, you like fermentation? Perfect. Be best at it, you know. Start doing fermentation, open your Instagram account, do experiments, you know, share the recipes, open your own brand, open a kombucha bar, whatever. You are best at the uh, agave, mezcal, tequila, you like agave, perfect, open a bar, you know, like El Copitas in St. Petersburg. Things like that, you know. Uh, try to be different and, and differentiate yourself. And I think that was the moment when I realized, okay, this is it. That's where I'm going to speak out, out loud and create kind of, my mark in hospitality nice yeah because in bartending in the in the in the past years you were like a flair tender you were throwing some bottles you were making also coffee and you were making uh, cocktails and mixology so you were the all three of them of of this uh, these uh, constituencies of bartending and then slowly you take like a smaller size and and go deeper into it and a smaller size exactly. and find something that you are just you passionate in, in, in that depthness of, of, of the craft. Exactly. 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 Wow. 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 We have something here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like it, it, it's good to try. It's good to try, you know, many things, try as many things as you can, you know, work in a coffee shop, work in a pub, go to work in a five star hotel. It's a life changing experience in terms of like sequence of service and, you know, uh, you know, the hotel is a bit different than the, than the craft bar, you know, try to work in a bar where they use Rotova, perhaps, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, try as many things as you can and then find your niche, take that and build it, build it, build it, build it. Because when someone, you know, tell your name, they want to see something with it. You know, when I say Eric Loring, I see those black sleek hair, always a gentleman with beautiful uniform. You know, when you say, I don't know, uh, Remy Savage, you did this French, French, beautiful, elegant guy, but playing with the rotova, playing with fermentation, everything minimalistic. Okay, when I when I when I when I heard your name, I see this very signature pour with a message, making people laugh. You know, things like that. It, it, that find your purpose and uh, find your signature in the hospitality because people want to put words next to your name. They said, Martin, would like to say coffee guy. You know what I mean? So it, be it is important. Be memorable somehow. Yeah, if they manage to put a word near uh, your name, you are in their mind, in their top of mind. They they create the connections, the link, and they will remember you. Yeah, yeah, and it can be through the competition. It can be through the brands you work with, through the innovation you do. Uh, there are there are so many opportunities out there. Yeah. Just have the same message and be consistent with the message and do it even nobody's following. <laughs> Doing it even exactly. if nobody's following at the beginning, you're not about the it's not about the followers. Nobody nobody will be there to watch you. You just have to do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, same, same. This is the same I want to do with hospitality. I mean, I'm doing with hospitality. I'm, I'm getting crazy about it, reading every day and night about history of hospitality, types of hospitality, secrets of hospitality, because at the end of the day, it's about hospitality. As you said, nobody cares if you have the, the best espresso martini. Nobody will remember you about your espresso martini, will remember you about being such a nice guy, being that person yeah, yeah. that is nice. Yeah. When you asked me to do this podcast, I was very, very happy because most of the time as I did podcasts and everyone asking about the cocktails and competitions and things like that, I guess it's matter, but hospitality is something so important. And sometimes 
especially younger bartenders, they overlook that aspect. You know, they want to know all classic drinks. They want to know how to use Rotovab. They want to know how to make the best menu. But they're forgetting about something what is so important. That's exactly the hospitality. Something what you cannot touch. I'm always trying to explain like, here we are providing service, okay? Service in terms of drinks, food, and coffee. But when we provide hospitality, it's something untouchable, you know? Service is actual drink. That's the product. But hospitality, you can't touch. It's like oxygen. You breathe and you realize you need it when you don't have it. Wow. And that's hospitality. You realize hospitality that you need it when you don't receive it, when you don't have it, when you don't feel it. And that's hospitality for me. It's like oxygen, like the air we breathe in, untouchable. It's out there and it's important for you, for your living. And it gives the vibe. Hospitality. And it's the yeah. reason why people are coming back. And it's the reason why they are remember you. And it's the reason why they are become uh, regulars and fanatics about you. Yeah. So being, being the exactly. nice guys. But what isn't hospitality? <laughs> Oh, oh, I have so many examples. I have so many examples. Hospitality isn't when bartender thinks that he's the most important person in the room. Mm. When he thinks that his technique and the tools are the most important things in the room. Hospitality is not when bartender lock himself in the bubble of the fame and ego and achievements. And hospitality isn't a bartender who thinks more about his problems in a private life rather than real present moment. And I'm telling that because I experienced all of that, because I've been there and I've done that. And sometimes I'm that kind of guy who is outside of present moment and maybe sometimes too egoistic and living in the bubble. And because I went through that, I can really tell you what is not hospitality. You know, hospitality for me, it's, the, it's, 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 it's being in a presence and giving the most precious thing to your guests, and that's attention. You know, nowadays, attention is what we're missing. In the, in the era of uh, digital media and social media, in the era where we can't travel anymore and we are locked out there, we're missing attention. And that's the most precious things to give to each other as a friends, as a family, as, a, as employees or workers, is the most precious thing we can share. So give your attention. All wow. the time, 100%. Wow, wow. The next question was about how can we engage our guest, but you just answered because attention is the word, word of engaging somebody. You cannot engage your guest yeah. if you're not providing the enough attention to him. This moment right now, I'm fully yours. Exactly. So exactly. Are... And I'm always saying that to everyone. Wow. You are actually uh, replying to my questions before asking them. So th I, I enjoyed this, the, the, the I like episode that. very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, this is yeah, this is what I, I wanted to talk about. Hospitality, how you see it. And, and it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, you. How you see now it's a, it's a big, I think from, from since every, every uh, since the beginning, it was the, the debate about the guest and the customer. How do you see this uh, relationship between guest, customer? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's like a co connection or comparison between the service and hospitality. If I wake up tomorrow morning and I feel like I have to cut my hair, and, you know, I have a needs and I need to fulfill my needs. So I'm going to the barber and my needs are basically fulfilled by providing a service. So I'm going there as a customer. I receive the service of cutting my hair. Now, if I go to that barber a month later and remember my name, type of the spray I use and I remember what I like, Suddenly, he's going to be providing me something extra. I'm still paying the same money, but he's going to be, oh, Martin, welcome back. How are you today? Where are you going? How's the business? Giving me water, giving me a glass of whiskey or coffee. Suddenly, from me becoming a, a customer and getting a service, I'm getting something untouchable, something on top of the service, which I'm not paying for. And that's hospitality. And suddenly, I'm becoming a guest. And that's what I'm telling to everyone. On this street where we are, there are one of the most famous coffee shops. And everyone doing equally the same coffee as us. Every customer coming for one thing only, and that's to receive the service in terms of the good quality coffee. But how we can win over them is providing something extra untouchable, and that's hospitality. Remembering the names, remembering the orders, being nice, being intensive, paying attention, and go over that. I'm paying my employees for service, but I'm expecting them to give hospitality because here we have a guest, not customers. Customers are in a barbershop, 
gas stations, shops, uh, repair stores, etc. And that's that's very important for me. Ooh, ooh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and and you, and uh, there are a few bars that are having customers because uh, unfortunately they are still providing just the service. They go there just to take the the glass of beer for example yeah like pouring in just providing having the service which for them it's equal if they order it home or drink them there so services are yet yeah, still providing them I did, yeah this beer is a good compassion because i had a few people even at the savoy or in maybe semi they came and they said ah oh, i don't drink cocktails i came i came for beer but that was like doesn't matter what you order you can always still give extra and you can always still pour that beer even with the style. You know, that's what I learned from the Savoy. You open a bottle, clean the top, take a glass, nice hand, stack, foam, shake the bottle, ta ta ta. You can do so many things, and it's just a beer. But even that simple, stupid beer, you can serve with such an excellence, they're going to be like, wow, okay. The best beer in the world, and it's a high neck end, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah the ritual you know? is so nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so you can you can add some magic, sprinkle some magic through to everything, or make it oh. in the art form. Of course, of course, absolutely. You can play so much with the people and with their. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love when especially they come here and they ask for something like very basic. Vodka lime soda. I was like, I give you the best vodka lime soda. Watch out. You know what I mean? They don't expect that. Yeah, and it's easy to do it. I mean, it's basic. You just need to add to something above and beyond, and that's like something extra. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And even if it's yeah, even if it's like the most simplest thing in the world, you can still add your personality into it. And when you add personality into it, that's that's the hospitality. Hospitality is your personality you as a human your your perception your attention very important it, you transform it in an experience now it's not just a service anymore it's an experience you personalized the 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 focus the attention the personality you you did like a personal uh service and you 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 deliver a memorable experience how do you yeah. see that art goes together with hospitality you have art background. How do you match the, the art background with the hospitality yeah. art? Yeah, I wouldn't call myself like uh, like artist because like many people think oh, bartenders are artists because they're creating amazing cocktails and everything is beautiful. Uh, yes, we, we are perceived many times as artists. Uh, we are creating something beautiful and tasty, of course. And our knowledge is there. And we are acting behind the bar as actors. And it's very close to art. I really don't mind how people call us. But uh, there are many, many similarities. Like if you look at maybe Semi, what we do, we dance behind the bar. We sing behind the bar. We have a rhythm. We have rituals. We play this tequila song on the bottles. And people coming to us are like, oh, when, when are you playing again? When is another show? People coming to our bar to see us having doing a show rather than having a drink. So what I realized that we are becoming more and more well-known for entertaining others, you know, and a hospitality business is entertainment business in the, the day, connected with the drinking and eating. Um, so every time we have a, we hiring new people to our company, I'm always, do you have a rhythm? What's your favorite music? What's your favorite musical? What's your favorite movie? Do you read the books? You know, I mean, things like that. Do you know how to move? It's so important because if I have a button behind the bottle, no way. You have to move. You have to dance. The bartending is a dance. To it's a, perform, it's this yeah. essence. Exactly. It's the essence. This, 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 this untouchable chemistry behind the team members, behind you and guests. It's so important. Oh, my God. I'm so obsessed with that. Like, you have to move. You never stand. So, yes, it is art. It is art, of course. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. How do you hire? Do you hire based on uh, hospitality skills or... Uh, how how do you smell the 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 people who are fit to the place? We, uh, <laughs> before COVID and even during COVID, we're getting so many CVs and so many people asking for uh, to work with us. And uh, I have to sit down with that person and talk, and have to see something in the eyes. They have, they have to be eager. They have to be thirsty. They have to be. They you know like go and get it. You know, go getters. I love go getters. You know, I don't like people like no, nah, I don't know, mate. No. Big, 
confident, go for it, you know, like take it, grab it by the horns and show me you got it. And, and, and they have to be genuinely nice people. You know, I'm not looking for a person with the best heart shake. I'm not looking for a person who knows all the classic drinks or know how to, you know, uh, clarify cocktails. We teach you all of that. I'm looking for personalities, charismas, people I see potential that can grow with us and the company and became independent owners in the future, eventually. Personality, personality, personality. It's all about personality. Hire people with a nice personality, with a strong personality. Exactly. <laughs> and then you help them to develop. <laughs> exactly. Going to, to memorable, uh, to memories, <laughs> which is the most memorable hospitality experience that you ever felt, but as a guest? I know you travel a lot. Around the world, you were a guest for so many times in so many nice bars, which is top of mind on the hospitality experience that you, you got. Wow. Oof. First one. Wow. Um, <laughs> I mean, there are, there are so many bars around the world, as you said, like, Just in 2019, before COVID, I did uh, 25 countries, <laughs> more than 55 cities. Each one I did 140 of flights. Bars. <laughs> yeah, hundreds, yeah, yeah. Hundreds, thousands uh, of bars if, visited. Thousand, and, and I love all of them. But if I could pick one, oh my God, it would be, it would be a, a Tokyo, Japan. And... Uh, It will be probably in a Tokyo, Japan, Star Bar Ginza of Mr. Kishisan, uh, a very legendary place. And I received one of the most humbling, welcoming experience. And it was just anything in Japan in terms of bars, I was always surprised and humbled and awakened spiritually and emotionally. The, 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 the details, the attention, the precision, the way they treat you. And uh, that's how it how would sum up uh japanese culture of bartending and perceiving hospitality really living in a present moment to the perfection and they do anything for you as a guest anything so that's they are that giving the their 100 attention and and to everything they are doing even washing the glasses for example yeah they are like everything it's a ritual it's done at, at its best yes so yes. japan together is experience and 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 The, the, the whole culture of, uh, of Japan. Yeah, I was impressed. I, I came changed, honestly, when I came back from, from Japan. And there I realized, like, how deep can this hospitality can be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like, they're waiting for 14 years to just make a thing behind a bar. Before that, they're just polishing glasses. So if you think about the dedication for the job and the, for the craft and art, While here in Europe, for example, you know, we finish school, we work on one week, year as a barbeck, and then we think we can be the manager of the cocktail bar and we, we want to win the, any competition and became uh, superheroes. But everything has a time and steps by steps. I'm learning every day, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just beginner, you know, and I have a beginning, beginner mindset yes. because I'm learning. Yes. Always I'm learning. learning, yeah. Always keep the bucket empty so you can keep pulling and in, putting inside. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Constantly learning. Yeah, that's, I mean, you actually partially uh, reply to a few of the questions that I was about to ask before, but I will put them somehow. <laughs> Maybe you ca we come with uh, well, extra <laughs> subtitles or something. I mean, you know, like uh, it's just going naturally out of me and uh, that's how yeah. I feel, you know, like pouring hospitality out yeah 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 yeah. it, it can be out seen there. i mean that's why I, i i wanted so bad to to interview to ask you questions to find out things but uh and that's why like uh, with no su no surprise sorry with no surprise but last year 2020 50 best bar awards gave us first world recognition for art of hospitality uh, in 50 best so we won this specific category art of hospitality as the most hospitable bar in the world and Uh, it was just incredible for us as a maybe semi, you know, to receive that, that the judges decided that we are not famous for cocktails or whatever, but we are famous for hospitality. And it really, it was this, this moment when we realized like, yes, what we do is, uh, I would say, old fashioned hospitality with modern drinks approach. You know, we do modern cocktails, but with old fashioned hospitality. Wow. Always polite, always guest first, always madam and sir sequence of service, hold the chair, hang the coat, 
And in Australia, it's very rare. And that's why we won over. That's why we became so famous. Nice, nice. What are the top three or five strategies for being that kind of, of a host, for uh, delivering so high level of hospitality? Do you have some strategies on like yeah. steps? of? of we have, we, yeah, yeah. We have a few rules. Uh, one of the first rules is 80-20. So when the, when the rocket, when the spaceship going to the universe, uh, the spaceship itself spent about 80% of the fuel on the ground before it, it lifts and flies to the universe. And the rest of the fuel, 20%, it's spent when they're just cruising in the atmosphere and in the galaxy, right? And that's exactly the secret behind our company and operation. We spend 80% of spending all the energy and effort in the grounds behind the scenes. And when we're flying out there and the doors are open and it's a show time, we're just cruising and enjoying. I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 80 20. That's a rocket measure. One of the measures as well is what Charlie Parker said, very famous uh, musician. He said, you know, learn the lyrics, master the instrument, and then forget all that bullshit and just play. And that's exactly the secret of our bartenders. They know the specs, they know the techniques, they know the bookings of the night, they know the procedure. Once the doors open and it's a show time, forget all the bullshit and just play, enjoy, cool. have fun. Oh. And the last one I would <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. the last one I would just say, the last one I would just say, you know, hospitality industry is very stressful and hard hospitality, and many times it's connected with the negative aspect uh, of especially people working in hospitality, they are tired and there are, there are lots of sad things happening. Uh, we have to understand that we have to be happy first of all with ourselves to make others happy. If you're not happy as a person in your private life, you won't be able to be happy at work and make others happy. So the most important when you walk to our bars, our staff members are having fun and they're happy and they're engaging and they're absolutely cheerful and joyful. But to be happy, you have to be happy with yourself and you have to be prepared. There's no way you can come behind the bar and start shooting bubbles and dancing and shouting and screaming if you don't have enough lime juice in the fridge, if your milk punch is not clarified properly, if you don't have enough ice, etc., etc., So, miss and plus first, then fun and joy, not vice versa. And there are so many bars out there in the world trying to follow us, but they're forgetting about that miss and plus, this 80% part 80%, behind. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's so important. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You need to have a stable base in order to, to climb... F- and, and to, to, exactly. add, to sprinkle the magic, to put the sherry on the cake, and <laughs> the cherry on the cake. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Wow. So these are the hospitality secrets. <laughs> I like those. Thank you very much for sharing so many, so many, like, value bombs. Uh, uh, very welcome, and I'm very happy to share. And uh, I cannot wait for borders to be open. And uh, <sighs> each person watching coming here and experience that you know uh, in real life because sometimes in the world of social media and world of digital media we see things which are beautiful we perceive things which are uh, powerful but then maybe sometimes they are not exactly same as real life and uh, we really want to provide the same experience in real life when people come to my bars not this, not just over instagram or social media so follow on Instagram and social media, but then you should taste it because you should need to, to fill it with, with, with all the five senses, not just seeing them. You need to taste it, to smell it, to, to feel the, the air that you are saying about hospitality, like entering the room, the vibe. It's like, it's like different. It's something else. You cannot explain that. Exactly. Exactly. But you have a strategy on creating it, that vibe. And I think that's the vibe, the, the air, the hospitality air that's in a, lo- in, in a bar, in a restaurant. It should be after the pandemic in order to be successful. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Do you have any secret sauce for you being so successful in the hospitality industry? Hard to tell, you know, because what works for me might not work for you. Um, there is no winning formula. There is none. Uh, there is, I, I cannot tell you this, what's going to work, you know. Um, peoples are different in each country. Audience is different. The palette, the style, the fashion, everything's changing every year. And every journalist asks every year, Martin, what's the trend? What's going to be trend next year? You know, low ABV cocktails now, alcoholic cocktails now, tequila, amaro. And uh, I'm always answering in one way and without being arrogant or egoistic and 
I don't want to follow the trends. I want to create a trend. I want to be followed. And oh, that's yeah. where I'm heading. That's where I'm heading. You know, uh, I don't follow others. I don't follow what others do or the rest of the world do. Yeah, fermentation, minimalism, kombuchas, agave. Cool, fine. But if I start following that, how can I differentiate myself? What else I can have to offer? That's why I'm going to create the trends and I want to be followed. And, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's a difference. Every year is different. The trends comes and goes. What yeah. works a year ago just might not work yourself. next year. Just be yourself. Like this is the, the secret sauce. I mean, I think this is like magical sauce. <laughs> just be yourself. I guess because so. I think everybody was at the beginning at this industry. For me, I was that person who was following the, the older, the better bartenders and trying to copy them, copy their moves, their style, their, yeah, yeah, yeah. their pourings. But their then everything. you put yourself into it. But yeah, then you tweak it to yourself. Exactly. But then express yourself. Don't express uh, somebody else. Don't express other uh, bartender that creating a trend. Just create. And, your and own I like trend. that word. Uh, I like that word express because many people coming to my bars and I'm behind a bar, you know, and I have very significant technique when I work. And they're like, wow, wow, what a show. Uh, you impress me so much. But I'm always saying, like, I'm here to not impress. I'm here to express, Ooh. you know? Yes. I'm expressing my personality through exactly. the moves. The shaker is extension of my personality. The drink is a, is description of my soul and feelings. And I'm here to express purely and honestly, genuinely who I am, who is Martin Hudak. I'm not here to impress. I'm not looking for followers or someone take your phone and make a video. This is not my number one goal. My number one goal is to surely, purely open myself and this is me. And this is like 360 with the art and hospitality because art means to express yourself. Artists are expressing themselves through paintings, through songs, through dancing, through everything. So art is about expressing and it becomes art of hospitality when you express your personality. You put your personality in every single serving, in every single move that you are doing. Wow. So 360. That's nice. That's what an nice. amazing conversation. I, an amazing I love it. Unfortunately, yeah. it's almost finishing. <laughs> I would stay yeah. hours to talk about uh, hospitality with people passionate same. about the same subject. So that's nice. That's nice. I have just one more question and then we have to, to finish it up, to, to wrap it up. Uh, the last question would be, what is your number one takeaway that you really want the listeners to remember from this episode? That one thing that should pop in their mind. Just be better, you know, be better than your old version of yourself. That's it. Be better. And don't try to be better than others at their yeah. trend. Be better by what, was you yes what you were yesterday. Exactly, exactly. like the title of exactly. this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you very much. Amazing. It was, Martin, a big pleasure. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation, for being part of, of this podcast, for dropping so many value bombs and enlightened, bringing some fresh air of hospitality. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Wish you all the best. And thank you for sharing uh, amazing topic and uh, amazing wisdoms with the uh, beautiful people around the world and all the best. It was a big pleasure. Thank you. And for the for the listeners, thank you very much for uh, for enjoying this episode. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the value bombs that we really have in this one hour. So if you didn't listen it, you can go one more time and listen again and maybe take some notes. I'm sure these notes will help you. Thank you very much for being part of this podcast. Paul Sferlia here. See you next week. Cheers.